everyone. I'm filling in for Martin Welsh while he's away for a few weeks. Kathy, you've got something on your arms. <laughs> <laughs> what are they? Water drinks? No, well plates. <laughs> Come in. Those figures I told you about, sir. Oh, right. Sea relief's batting average. Not exactly the West Indies, are they? They consistently have the worst arrest rate in the station. And that goes right back to Sid Reese's time. So why hasn't anybody noticed this before? You don't think it's just bad luck? Well, they've possibly been unfortunate in a high turnover of officers. I thought that would help move things along, wouldn't you? There's an ethos, sir. It persists that they're the top guns. It's ironic, considering these figures. Who's aware of this? I think most people are. Well, where does it stem from? There must be some explanation. No, sir. No? <laughs> well, they have won the station snooker competition a few times. Five beats. Alton. There. Come on, if you stick your hand up in here, she's going to think you want to go to the toilet or something. Shut up. I don't look that young. Do you want to take parade? No, miss. Right, Kevin. Cumberland Drive, number 28, a Mr McAnally seems to have locked himself out of the house. Cute. He's an OAP, so see what you can do. You got a crowbar, Kevin? Yeah. Keep it down my trousers. <laughs> it's not what I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> have you got Torrett's syndrome or something? What's that? It's a disease where you can't stop blurting out what's ever in your brain, lock it. <laughs> <laughs> you've got yourself a carbon, or otherwise you've just got to copy it out again. All right, Cathy? How do you control them, Sarge? Well, sea relief? They're a difficult bunch. Nah, you'll be all right. Got any advice, have you? Oh, I don't know. You could try religion. <laughs> Cathy. just come in for a cup of coffee. I saw him take off his tunic and put it on the back seat. It's not a police vehicle, is it? Nope. They could be winding you up. Derek. Coming, sir. Sea relief. Yes, sir. What's your opinion of them? Well, in what context are we talking, sir? Well, we seem to have a relief that's underperforming, badly managed, and hardly enhancing the reputation of this station. Something happened to bring this to light, sir. I gather there's been a problem for some time. Well, yes, sir. So why didn't you make me aware of it? Well, there's a few fuzzy edges, sir, and I have had long chats with Dave Bruce, but he has only been their inspector for a short while. Mm. Well, there's a certain ethos that I've discovered. Well, each relief has its own character, sir. It helps to build a sense of identity. Yes, well, I want that identity changed. And I want to be kept informed. Yes, sir. There's an old man, number 28. He's locked himself out. He's ever so upset. Sierra Oscar from Sierra Oscar 3. Receiving over. Go ahead, Sarge. Yeah, I'm at Cumberland Drive. I dispatched PC Alton here about 15 minutes ago. I want to know what's going on. Message received. We'll try and contact PC Alton. I'm on my way. Thanks. There you are, love. Thank you. Are you all right, sir? I've been locked out. Since what time? Well, I went to put the milk bottles out. It must be freezing. What, dear? I'll see what I can do. You might need a locksmith. Try the window. You'll have to use the window around the side. Where have you been? It doesn't take you 15 minutes to get here. What are you talking about? I've been here once. I climbed in through the downstairs window and let him in. Is that true? 
Into the door. I don't understand. You can't have locked yourself out twice. I've locked the downstairs window, so I'll have to try and get in round here. All right. I can see what you'd have been if you hadn't been a copper, Kevin. You really should do something about the locks on your windows, Mr. McAnally. Okay, what's this all about? Did you do it deliberately? Don't be stupid. Do you call us round for a chat? Do I look as if I want a chat? Okay, I'm in. Right, come on, I'll give you a hand up. No, I don't need your help. Have you thought about leaving a key with your neighbours? Oh, I'm all right. A bit of a rude old sod. It's all right, he's deaf. I'll see you later. Hang on. You can't just go. There's obviously something up. I'm not into all that social work rubbish. Bye. Thanks, son. Hello. Hello. Yes? Mrs. McAnally? Yes. Your husband tells us he was locked out. That's right, he was. He locked me out all night. Is that true? Oh, don't make it sound worse than it was. He could have got hypothermia. Well, that's rubbish, dear. Anyway, I've had enough of him. Let's see what she's like. I thought you were deaf. Well, I've got a deaf head, haven't I? Look, it's obvious you two have had an argument, but could your husband come back in the house now, please? The door's open. And will you promise not to row again? You must be younger than you look. All right, not to lock him out again. If he behaves himself. Lock it. Yes, Sarge. Come in. I'll have a word with you. Shut the door. Have you got money problems, son? Well, I could do with the overtime if you've got some. I can see that. You put in for four and a half days in the last month. Yeah, that's because I call service. But you're only entitled to days off in lieu. Unless you were given less than eight days' notice. That's right. Is that what you're claiming? Well, for my records. If you're pulling a flanker, you know what will happen. You'll be permanently overlooked for any overtime that's going. Well, I may have made a mistake. I mean, I'm not trying to put one over. Let me put it this way. Would you object if I crossed it out? Well, I may be right. You tell me. All right. Cross it out. Good. Off you go. Lucy? What? Where have you been? Don't try and give me an hard time. I've had enough today. Come back here. I saw you driving a private vehicle while you were supposed to be on duty. Look, I had a puncture on the way to work. I went to get it fixed, all right? No, it's not all right. You were supposed to be working your beat. You should do all that in your own time. OK. How was I meant to get home after the shift this evening? There's nowhere to get it mended at 10 o'clock at night, is there? You were driving across Cavendish Road about 20 minutes ago. You didn't appear to have much of a problem then. That's because that's not my car. Oh, whose is it? Kevin Alton's. I had to leave my car on a double yellow line in the high road. Can I go now? I haven't finished yet. Why didn't you change the wheel instead of leaving your car illegally parked? Because I didn't have a spare. Oh, do you have an MOT? Look, you jumped up, little cow. Don't play sergeants with me. Are you insured to drive PC Alton's vehicle? Yeah. Have an insurance certificate? No. I'm covered by P.C. Orton's insurance. You better be. She may be in the vicinity. See where we get with that. Cheers, Viv. Hey, lads. I've just had a run-in with Kathy Marshall. What about? Yeah, it was nothing, really. I was offside. I had to get a flat sorted out of my motor. She didn't see you. Well, oh, she'll probably only go to Inspector Bruce and you'll end up with a rollicking, that's all. Yeah, well, that's nothing new, is it? No. 
Do us a favour, though. Give Kevin Orton a yell. She saw me buzzing up the road in his motor. Tried to do a little number on me about whether I was insured. What? She's short of a rest or something? Don't worry, we'll sort her out. She's just trying to prove if she can wear wife fronts, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to do any work today? Tell PC Alton I'd like to see him, please. Kath, what are you doing? My job. You'll be taking on the whole relief. Oh, come on, it's about time someone sorted them out, and I'm fed up with their sloppy attitude. You've only been acting sergeant five minutes. Yeah, and we've been cleaning up after them for years. All right, Kevin. Yes, Sarge. Come in. Judge. Did you give Lockett permission to drive your car? Yeah. And does your insurance cover his use of the vehicle? No, I thought it did. But it doesn't, am I right? Did you discuss the matter with PC Lockett? I can't remember. I'm sure you know that by giving Lockett permission to drive the vehicle, you could be considered to have aided and abetted a criminal offence. Are you serious? So, did you discuss the matter? Not exactly. Thank you. You can go. Come in, Cathy. How's it going? I haven't had a proper chance to welcome you aboard. Well, there's a bit of a problem, sir. I don't know if you've heard. No. I discovered PC Lockett not working his beat. I see. Well, I'd better give him a little chat about that. What was he up to? He went to a garage to get a tyre changed, in the course of which he was driving PC Alton's car without insurance. Well, he's not got comprehensive insurance? No, sir. He's got himself into a bit of a mess, hasn't he? And you're obviously taking the matter seriously. What were you thinking you should do about this? I thought I'd consult with you, sir. Yes. Yes, leave it with me. I'll take care of it. I feel I should be seen to take action, sir. Well, yes, and you have. You've shown that by coming to me. I don't think Lockett should get away with it. I mean, without being moralistic, driving without insurance, what if he'd had an accident and injured someone? I agree. Of course, one has to take into account that a conviction is tantamount to ending his career. And skiving off work is a sackable offence in many jobs, sir, in itself. Well, you're right. He should have sought permission. But I understand that he felt his car was dangerously parked. He was on a double yellow line. I thought you weren't aware of the facts. No, no, no. I said I wasn't aware there was a problem. No, I wanted to hear your side of the story. Yes. Well, I think you understand how I feel, sir. I'd prefer the matter to remain in my hands, if that's all, sir. Sarge? Yep. Mr. McAnally, he claims he's locked out again. We'll sort it out. Well, no, I just thought I should inform you. Thank you. Are you sure I shouldn't put him in touch with a locksmith? Not unless you know one who's good with domestics. Domestics? Well, if you hadn't sauntered off the first time, you'd have found that out for yourself. Yes, sir. Kathy? Is it me or is it sea relief? No problem. <laughs> oh, Sergeant Cryer? I see. Yeah, she's here in the office with me now. OK. Inspector Bruce. What's going on? Apart from the relief being a complete bunch of prats, you mean? I caught Lockett going AWOL for half an hour and I caught him driving without insurance. So Mr Bruce said. But he doesn't want to do anything about it, does he? Well, it's difficult. You've only been on the relief for a couple of hours. So Mr Bruce wants you to nobble me. He wants me to give you some advice. It's beginning to sound like I'm the one who's being reprimanded. Well, I don't know what you should do, but you shouldn't let it be seen as a crusade. Thanks, Sarge. I was told to inform you that PC Alton's having a spot of bother with a domestic. Thank you. Yeah, apparently Mr. McAnally was asking for you personally to sort the problem out. I see. And the other thing is I want to apologise. I was out of order and I honestly didn't realise I wasn't covered by Kevin's insurance. Yeah, that's what they all say. Sarge. I made a mistake. Yes, you did. And it's one you may not forget. 
You swan around thinking you're Jack the Lad. Well, I'm fed up with your fat mouth. It's going to take you a lot more than charm to get out of this one, sunshine. What's all this martial business about, Bob? Well, you've heard. Look, I've got a nip out. Do you fancy a drive? All right. What happened? Tell her I didn't mean to do it. Tell her I love her. What have you done? He's given me a bloody nose, that's all. Why? I lost my temper. You've seen what you can be like. You all right? Come on, open the door, please. I presume it was you who had a little word in Mr. Brownlow's ear about sea relief, then? In passing? Well, the next time you pass down information like that, it'd be nice to get a bit of warning. Snappy? Oh, sour. And we ought to take that into account when we look at this martial matter. It's Cathy's decision. I think Lockett should be stuck on. Lucy's dispensable. He's muddied his shoes once too often. But he is only a symptom of the disease. Well, a bit of healthy pruning might help. I agree. But I think it'd be better all round if it was directed for myself or Mr Brown. Oh. I think if you look closely, you'd see that I wanted to leave him then. You couldn't stay together for 50 years if you didn't love each other. You've got a lot to learn. I've been waiting for him to die for 50 years. Has he hit you before? Look, I, I don't want to get him into any sort of trouble. You understand? No, I don't. If this has been going on for some time, you've got to do something about it. But we're both to blame, dear. There's no excuse for hitting you. Well, he was like that before we were married. I, he's always had a quick temper. And you put up with it? For better or worse. Well, the funny thing is that it's, it's him that's frightened of me. Well, it's true. And that's why he hits you. He told me so. He hits me and then he runs out of the house. He always has. And you don't think it's because he might be frightened of himself, of what he might do? Oh, maybe that's the reason, yes. I so saw you had a chat with Mr Conway. I've got to see him later. Oh, yeah? Something to do with a problem with the relief? I suppose you've heard about this set, too, between Marshall and Lockett. Yeah. Well, how do you see it? Lockett's old enough to know better. Oh, come on, Bob. She's come gunning for us. From what I can gather, Marshall was acting CAD sergeant last week, and she inherited a problem from my relief. So I was told. So she wants to have a dab at one of my officers. She witnessed a crime. Well, I can deal with that. She's doing her duty. Yeah, well... We'll see about that. I think she's let this temporary promotion go to her head. Dave, as a mate, I suggest you don't get too closely involved. What do you mean? Let's just say this is not the weather to stick your neck out. I should arrest you for ABH, Mr. McNally. Actual bodily harm, but your wife's unwilling to make a statement. I could arrest you anyway for common assault under Section 25 to protect her safety, but she assures me she can sort this out herself. I'm sorry. I've told her to go down to the local magistrates. It won't cost a penny. You don't need a solicitor to take out a family protection order. She'll have to make an affidavit, and a magistrate will issue an order with the power of arrest attached to it. She's going to prosecute me? That's not what we're after. What we want is for you to stop your violence towards her. She knows you love her. I do. And that you're sorry. But this can't go on. No. That's my number at the station. Ask for Kathy. And if it happens again, I will arrest you for common assault. Thank you. From now on. I hope so. OK. Yeah. Uh, listen. Sorry. All right. I've had a word with Mr. Bruce. I think you're going to find it difficult to stick this lad on. Now, you're going to be on this relief for another couple of weeks, yeah? Kathy. Sir. OK. The 
any difficulties? Nope. I've got enough for one day. Yes, well, a problem like that comes up once in a blue moon. I've had a word with the lad. He's aware you may take action, and frankly, I've told him he'll be lucky to get away with it. Well, with respect, sir, it'd be on my conscience if I just turned a blind eye. If he was Joe Public, I wouldn't hesitate to stick him on. Could finish his career. I'm not sure from the way he behaved today if it's the right career for him anyway. One of the true marks of authority, and this only comes with experience, is knowing when to apply leniency. Is knowing when? That's right. Well, obviously, if I'm going to continue as a sergeant, I've got a lot to learn. Thank you, sir. Go in. Is this a good time, sir? Oh, hello, Cathy. Come in, sir Dunn. So, how are you finding sea relief? It's a challenge. So what's the problem? Well, I was thinking, sir, about my promotion board if I wasn't successful. I'd like to be considered for the domestic violence unit they're setting up at Barton Street. Oh, what suddenly brought this about? I thought I should put my name forward before it was too late. Yes, well, it's not up to me, you know that. What concerns me is this abrupt change of mind. Frankly, sir, I'm 32. I took the exam because I couldn't see myself plodding around as an ordinary WPC for the rest of my life. Something happened? Quite a few things, actually. But basically, if I'm honest, I'm not sure I'm suited to the job. Well, it's difficult being an acting sergeant. You're neither one thing or the other. You're a corporal of horse. I expect you've been called that, have you? No. I've been called a few other things, sir. The lads are inclined to want to give you the old coffin drop. I don't think I know that expression. <clears throat> no, it's a... It's a test they, uh, They do on teenage boys to see if they have the, uh, The necessary accoutrements. Oh, I think they've learnt I've got the accoutrements, sir. It's not what it's about. Well, what is it, then? Organising and disciplining officers it doesn't come naturally to me. But domestic violence, it's an area I know something about. All right, Cathy. I'll see what I can do. Thank you, sir. These are for you. You can't bribe me. From Mr and Mrs McAnally, from now on. Look, I'm sorry. So am I. You know I'm going to have to stick you on. Why? For driving without insurance. No, no, I've discovered I'm covered by my old man's insurance. I don't suppose you've got the details. Not here. Well, if that's true, you'll only have to face a disciplinary charge, won't you? <laughs>